Good day, poker peeps. This is Sky with Smart Poker Study. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a Poker Tracker 4 study strategy, namely learning from saw flop hands. Now, speaking of Poker Tracker 4 and learning with Poker Tracker 4, I want to make your Poker Tracker 4 studies as easy as possible and efficient as possible. There's a free PDF I created for you called Five Poker Tracker 4 Study Strategies Every Player Needs to Use. You can get it through the link in the description down below. So here's the thing. It's crucial to make great decisions on the flop. That's the first of three post-flop streets, and it's where the pot is the smallest as the hand goes on. Any bets and raises happen on the flop, turn pot is bigger. Bets and raises there, river pot is bigger. But post-flop all begins on the flop, and it's critical to improve your post-flop and flop playing skills. So what I want you to do is follow along with Poker Tracker 4 right now. Do as you consume is the idea. Run the same filters that I'm doing and save them all as quick filters for easy future access. The first filter we're going to run is just the saw flop filter. So within your database right here, go to more filters, actions and opportunities, flop, and then turn on saw flop. Nice and simple. When you add it to the filter, save and apply filters. Actually, before you do that, save it as a quick filter. Give it whatever name you want. You can see that I name it saw flop. So it shows you out of the 5,000 or so hands I played, I saw the flop 620 times, 213 big blinds per 100 hands, positive. So that's good. Every time I see the flop, on average, I win 2.13 big blinds. Pretty nice win rate, if I do say so myself. So let's sort this by date real quick, because there's a specific hand I want to go through in a little bit later in the video. Now, I love running the soft flop filter for myself to learn from my flop hands, as well as for my opponents. But there's a few different situations that I like to break this into, or break it up into. I also like to see soft flop when I'm in position. Go to more filters. Keep the soft flop on right here. Click on more filters, add to filter, hand details, and you'll see player position right here. Now we're concerned with the position on the flop when you're in position. So go to flop position. Now active player position relative to all opponents is in position. Just turn that on. Just click this once. They'll both turn on, add it to filter. And then of course, save it as a quick filter before you go on. Save and apply filters. You'll see the name I give it, soft flop IP for in position. Now we can go through and look at all the various hands where I saw the flop in position. Another interesting, interesting filter is soft flop not in position. So keeping this one here, the easiest thing to do, more filters, highlight the in position filter and hit not. Now, as you can see, soft flop, but not in position. Simple. Of course, save it as a quick filter save and apply filters and bam 333 hands seeing the flop not in position still a nicely positive win rate right here the last thing i want to show you is the number of players seeing the flop because as we all know it's easier to plan a hand and play throughout a hand if you're just heads up gets more difficult in multi-way pot so another good way to break this up is let's go to more filters let's exit out of this one or remove it click add filter and let's do the number of players hand details number of players right here seeing the flop between two and two turn it on so just type in two and two add to filter save it as a quick filter of course apply the filters and you can see i named this one soft flop heads up when i'm heads up nicely profitable right here I also have soft flop three way. So that's just setting the number of players between three and three. You can run that, save it as a quick filter right there. Bam, you have all the different soft flop filters, the most useful soft flop filters. Now, questions to ask as you're reviewing these hands. And what I'd recommend that you do is save each of these as quick filters. And then over the next few days, review 10 or 15 hands from each of these filters, maybe losing hands, maybe some winning hands, maybe questionable hands, like why did I play that hand that way? And then go through and ask yourself these questions as you review all 10 or 15 hands. And we're going to go ahead right now and take a look at that queen jack suited hand. So I'm going to just start by arrowing on my keyboard through the action of the hand um, and then seeing what happens. We're going to ask ourselves these questions as we go. So we get a limper right here. You can see 86 and 0, a fish already color coded in green. All those folds, I iso raise with the intention of just getting this fish all to myself heads up. 
But alas, we get a caller and then a second caller right here. Cool. So before we go to the flop, who am I up against? I already said we're up against a fish. He has position on us, but he is a total fishy player. 86% of the time calling. I'm sure he limp calls a ton as well. Loving this player as a target on my table. Now this player, only 15 hands, but he's 20-20. He's three bet probably one out of four, one out of four times. No calls, only raising first in, one out of eight, but still raising first in. This player is a prop, potentially a tight aggressive player with just a small sample. He's got a huge stack. So that's who we're up against. Let's talk about their range. That's the second question. You always want to put your opponents on a range. Just think about what are the most likely hands that they're calling pre-flop. Well, this player didn't end the action, but because we're up against a fish who limped, he can assume this player's not going to limp race. He's going to limp call. So he was getting a good price on his uh, the additional three chips that he put in. He has all the mid and small pocket pairs, some suited connectors, suited gappers, lots of, or maybe every suited Broadway, tons of suited aces, and uh, maybe some of the best offsuit Broadways. He could probably fold queen 10 offsuit, but he might call with king queen, maybe king jack offsuit as well. And this player, because he ended the action, he limped in. He's probably calling in with almost 100% of his open limping range. So all the pairs, suited connectors, suited gappers, suited double gappers, suited jack, suited queen, suited king, suited aces. He's got so much. Every Broadway, maybe even queen 10 and jack 10 offsuit in his range as well. Flop comes down, really good flop for us. Pair or top pair uh, plus the flush draw. Love in this pot. So we already talked about their range. How does the flop help or hurt their range? Now, there's no straight draws possible on this board. Well, I guess there are gut shots. Three and then a four, five. They're missing a six for a seven, right? So there's some gut shots. But on a flush draw potential board, players don't really continue with gut shots. This does not help so well. They have a ton of broadways in their range, but there's only one broadway on the board. They're king jack, they're king 10, they're ace 10, all whiffed on this board right here. We do block, we have a flush draw, but we do block some of the best potential flush draws that they could have. The suited jacks and the suited queens for flush draws, they can't have, because we have that. They can still have the suited aces and the suited kings, but everything else, like even like seven, eight, is gonna hate this flop right here. Even pocket eights and nines and tens, they're not gonna hate it. They'll probably call one street, but they really don't like this flop because the one over card. So I think this is a great spot to potentially bet and get value out of any kind of flush draw, maybe even from this player with a gut shot, five, six, four, five that he might have. Even players who don't want to fold an under pair, hoping that they're just not beat yet. Maybe wanting to see what I do on the first street, hoping I can check or hoping I check the turn so they can check behind or bet to bluff me. But I'm getting called out of a ton of weaker stuff, so I size it a little bit bigger than half pot. A call, and then a fold right there. Darn, the fish that we wanted left the hand. The tight player stayed in. So what is a tight player going to stay in? It's kind of like thinking about their range still, right? I think a tight player is staying in with any queen at this point. Even ace queen can just call kind of stringing me along. Set of threes, set of sevens, over pairs, eights, nines, tens, any kind of flush draw as well. So there's a lot of stuff that we're still currently head, ahead of at this point. The turn comes a nine, doesn't really scare me. I've still got a great hand at this point, so I bet for value again. But let me tell you, I hate this bet. I double barreled too big. It makes a tight aggressive player's decision super easy. He's only continuing, really, with top pair or better. Some of those top pairs beat me. King, queen, ace, queen beat me. Um, he's calling with seven, nine, a set of sevens here. I think most of his flush draws, other than like ace nine of diamonds, king nine of diamonds with a pair plus a draw, they're probably all going to fold at this point. So I'm only getting value from a very small queen 10, maybe. Like even that, I don't think I'm getting value out of. I think everything that he calls beats me here. So at this point, I think I am crushed. I hate that I made such a big bet at this point. But I check because I don't like the board. I don't like how that card just now interacted with the queen and the nine right there. I'm just hoping he checks behind. And he bets small. If you think about the math involved, Poker Tracker 4 shows I only need 14% equity. If he is bluffing one out of seven times, 14% here, then this is a, a profitable call to make. And I was just hoping that, you know, when I made this call, I was hoping, oh, he had ace nine of diamonds. 
ace five of diamonds that wanted to finally bluff on the river after missing a draw himself. Because I think tight aggressive players are capable of bluffing rivers, I made this call, I called, and he showed the pocket nines, which is perfect, right? If that didn't come a nine, uh, if it was an eight, a five, a three, he probably would have folded, and that 20 big blind bet would have just ended up missing out on all value. If it would have been an undercard, I bet I could have bet, what was this pot at the time? 25 big blinds? 26, I bet I could have bet 13 big blinds. If that wasn't a nine, if it was a an eight, a six, a five, a four, a three, a deuce, an undercard, I bet he would have called again, giving me value right there. But alas, I just value owned myself by betting too big. All right, thank you so much for watching. And just to remind you, get that free PDF, five poker tracker for study strategies every player needs to use. And this is the second video in this poker tracker four series. For the next video, click the button right up above.